is chapter seven of the ATI nutrition book. Uh, this is a big chapter, so uh, nutrition across the lifespan. Uh, nutritional needs change as clients pass through the stages of the lifespan, reflecting physiological changes. Nurses must address nutritional needs across the lifespan and have a thorough understanding of how needs change. This includes planning and implementing dietary plans that meet clients' specific needs and assist in health promotion. Major stages of the lifespan that have specific nutritional needs include pregnancy and lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescence, and adulthood and older adulthood. General guidelines. The Dietary Guidelines for Americans advocate, advocates healthy food selections. A variety of fiber-rich fruits and vegetables, whole grains, low-fat or fat-free milk and milk products, lean meats, poultry, fish, legumes, eggs, and nuts. Recommendations include nutrient-dense foods and beverages. The 2020 to 2025 guidelines provide four overarching guidelines to encourage healthy eating patterns for each stage of life. Follow a healthy dietary pattern at every stage of life. For about the first six months of life, exclusively feed humans milk, infants human milk, or iron-fortified infant formula if human milk is not available. Provide supplemental vitamin D beginning soon after birth. At about six months, introduce nutrient-dense complementary food that include a variety of foods from all food groups. From 12 months through older adult, follow a healthy dietary pattern that meets nutrient needs, achieves a healthy body weight, and reduces the risk of developing chronic disease. Customize and enjoy nutrient-dense food and beverage choices to reflect personal preferences, cultural traditions, and budgetary considerations. Pregnancy and lactation. Pre-pregnancy nutrition is highly significant and plays an important role because early fetal development occurs before a client might realize they are pregnant. A client should be well-nourished and within the normal weight range prior to conception. Low levels of folate prior to conception increases the likelihood of neural tube defects. Good nutrition during pregnancy is essential for the health of the unborn child. Maternal nutritional demands are increased for the development of the placenta, enlargement of the uterus, formation of amniotic fluid, increase in blood volume, and preparation of the breasts for lactation. A daily increase of 340 calories is recommended during the second trimester of pregnancy, and an increase of 452 calories is recommended during the third trimester of pregnancy. The nutritional requirement of clients who are pregnant or lactating involves more than increased caloric intake. Specific dietary requirements for major nutrients and micronutrients should be met. Dietary Guidelines. Achieving an appropriate amount of weight gain during pregnancy prepares a client for the energy demands of labor and lactation and contributes to the birth of a newborn of normal birth weight. The recommended weight gain during pregnancy varies for each client depending on their body mass index, or BMI, and weight prior to pregnancy. Lactating clients require an increase in daily caloric intake if the client is breastfeeding during the postpartum period, an additional daily intake of 330 calories is recommended during the first six months, and an additional daily intake of 400 calories is recommended during the second six months. Dang it. <clears throat> major and micronutrient nutrient requirements. Dietary requirements for major nutrients, protein should Comp comprise 20% of the daily total calorie intake. The dietary reference intake, or DRI, for protein during pregnancy is 71 grams per day. Protein is essential for rapid tissue growth for maternal and fetal structures, amniotic fluid, and extra blood volume. Clients who are pregnant should be aware that animal sources of protein might contain large amounts of fats. Fat should be limited to 30% of total daily calorie intake. Carbohydrates should comprise 50% of the total daily calorie intake. Ensuring adequate carbohydrate intake allows for protein to be spared and available for the synthesis of a fetal tissue. The need for most vitamins and minerals increases during pregnancy and lactation. Vitamins are essential for blood formation, absorption of iron, and development of fetal tissue. <clears throat> Additional dietary recommendations. Fluid, 2,000 to 3,000 milliliters of fluid daily from food and drinks. Preferred fluids include water, juice, and milk. 
carbonated beverages and fruit drinks provide little to no nutrients. Alcohol, it is recommended that clients abstain from alcohol consumption during pregnancy. There is no safe recommendation for alcohol use during pregnancy. Caffeine. Caffeine crosses the placenta and can affect the movement and heart rate of the fetus. However, moderate use, less than 200 milligrams a day, does not appear to be harmful. Vegetarian diet. Well-balanced vegetarian diets that include dairy products can provide all the nutritional requirements for pregnancy. Folic acid intake. It is recommended that 600 micrograms a day of folic acid be taken during pregnancy. Current recommendations for lactating clients include 500 micrograms a day folic acid. It is necessary for the neuro neurologic development of the fetus and to prevent birth defects. It is essential for mater maternal red blood cell formation. Clients who have had child born with a neural tube defect should consume 4 milligrams daily of folic acid during pregnancy. Food sources include leafy, green vegetables, enriched grains, and orange juice. Folic acid is a synthetic form of folate and is absorbed better by the body. Folic acid is found in supplements and in fortified foods. Folate is found in natural foods. Iron. The DRI for iron increases by 50% during pregnancy to support the increase in maternal blood volume and to provide iron for fetal liver, liver storage. Iron can be obtained from meats, eggs, leafy greens, and enriched breads and dried fruits. Consuming foods high in vitamin C aids in the absorption of iron. It is recommended that pregnant clients take a supplement of 27 to 30 milligrams of iron daily to assure adequate intake. Non-nutritive sweeteners. Several non-nutritive sweeteners have been approved for use during pregnancy. Occasional use is not considered harmful, but it is known if they are been, but it is not known if they are beneficial. Fish. The FDA has issued advisories regarding fish and shellfish consumption during pregnancy due to the risk of mercury levels. Mercury can be toxic to developing fetal brain tissue. Fish are a good source of omega-3 fatty acids, which are important for fetal brain and eye development. Limit albacore tuna to 6 ounces a week. Avoid tile fish, shark, swordfish, marlin, orange ruffy, and king mackerel due to mercury content. Limit weekly consumption of seafood to 12 ounces. Dietary complications. Nausea and constipation are common during pregnancy. For nausea, eat dry crackers, toast, and salty or tart foods. Avoid alcohol, caffeine, fats, and spices. <sighs> Avoid drinking fluids with meals and do not take medications to control nausea without checking with the provider. For constipation, increase fluid consumption at least eight cups per day and include extra fiber in the diet. Fruits, vegetables, and whole grains contain fiber. Regular physical activity can minimize or prevent constipation. Maternal phenyl ketonuria, or PKU, is a maternal genetic disease in which high levels of phenylalanine pose danger to the fetus. It is important for the client to start a PKU diet at least three months prior to pregnancy and continue the diet throughout pregnancy. The diet should include foods low in phenylalanine, foods high in protein, fish, poultry, meat, eggs, nuts, and dairy products must be avoided due to high phenylalanine levels. The client's blood phenylalanine levels should be monitored during pregnancy. These interventions will prevent fetal complications intellectual disability and behavioral problems. Assessment data collection and interventions. Nursing assessments should include a complete profile of the client's knowledge base regarding nutritional requirements during pregnancy. Nurses should review with the client the recommended dietary practices for pregnant and lactating clients while providing mater materials containing this information. Infancy. Growth rate during infancy is more rapid than any other period of the life cycle. It is important to understand normal growth pattern to determine the adequacy of an infant's nutritional intake. Birth weight doubles by four to six months and triples by one year of age. The need for calories and nutrients is high to support the rapid rate of growth. Appropriate weight gain averages 0.11 to 0.21 kilograms, or four to seven ounces per week during the first four to six months. An infant grows approximately 2.5 centimeters, or one inch, per month in height during the first six months and approximately 
1.25 centimeters or half an inch per month during the second six months. Head circumference increases rapidly during the first six months at a rate of 1.5 centimeters per month. The rate slows to 0.5 centimeters per month for months 6 to 12. By one year, head size should have increased by 33%. This is reflective of the growth of the nervous system. The American Academy of Pediatrics, or AAP, recommends the exclusive best breastfeeding for infants for the first for at least the first six months of age and up to two years of age or longer if desired. Iron fortified infant formula is an alternative if human milk is not available. Infants can receive vitamin D supplements following birth if consuming less than 28 ounces of human milk or formula. At about six months, introduce nutrient dense complementary foods that include a variety of foods from all food groups along with human milk or formula. From 12 months through older adulthood, follow a healthy dietary pattern that meets nutrient needs, achieves a healthy body weight, and reduces the risk of developing chronic disease. Semi-solid foods should not be introduced before six months of age to coincide with the development of the gastrointestinal system, head control, ability to sit, and, and the back and forth motion of the tongue. Gestational iron stores begin in the, to deplete around four months of age, so iron supplementation could be prescribed for infants if indicated. Once solid foods are introduced, iron fortifying cereal is a good source of iron. Cow's milk, cow's milk should not be introduced into a diet until after one year of age because protein and mineral content stress the immature kidney. And a young infant cannot fully digest the protein and fat contained in cow's milk. Meeting nutritional needs. Additional information about feeding is available in the Mater Maternal Newborn Review Model, Newborn Nutrition Chapter, and the Pediatric Nursing Review Model, Health Promotion of Infants Chapter. Breastfeeding. A goal of Healthy People 2030 is to increase the proportion of infants who are 6 months and 12 months of age to exclusive best breastfeeding. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, World Health Organization, or WHO, and the American Academy of Pediatrics, or AAP, recommend that infants receive breast milk solely until six months of age and breastfeeding should be continued while introducing complementary foods up to two years of age or longer. Donor milk can be considered in certain circumstances. The choice to feed an infant human milk from a source other than the infant's parent should be made in consultation with the provider because the nutritional needs of each infant depend on many factors, including the infant's age and health. The FDA recommends that if an infant is to be fed human milk from a source other than the infant's parent, the only milk from a source that has screened its donors and take other precautions to ensure the safety of the milk. The AAP recommends that for the first six months, infants should receive no water or formula except in cases of medical indication or informed parental choice. In the hospital, no water or formula should be given to a breastfed infant unless prescribed by a provider. Nutritional advantages of breast milk. Carbohydrates, proteins, and fats in breast milk are pre-digested for ready absorption. Breast milk is high in omega-3 fatty acids. Breast milk is low in sodium. Iron, zinc, and magnesium found in breast milk are highly absorbable. Calcium absorption is enhanced as the calcium to phosphorus ratio is two to one. Breastfeeding teaching points. The newborn is offered the breast immediately after birth and frequently thereafter. There should be 8 to 12 feedings in a 24-hour period. Instruct the client to demand feed the infant and to assess for hunger cues. These include rooting, suckling on hands and fingers, and rapid eye movement. Crying is a late indicator of hunger. The newborn should nurse up to 15 minutes per breast. Finding that, findings that indicate the newborn has completed the feeding include the slowing of newborn suckling, a softened breast, or sleeping. Eventually, the infant will empty a breast within 5 to 10 minutes, but might need to continue to suck to meet comfort needs. Do not offer the newborn any supplements unless indicated by the provider. Frequent feedings every two hours can be indicated, and manual expression of milk to initiate flow can be needed. Awaken the infant to feed every three hours during the day and every four at night. Encourage clients to express breast milk for supplementation if extra fluids or calories are required. Expressed milk can be refrigerated in sterile bottles or storage bags and labeled with a date and time the milk was expressed. 
It can be maintained in the refrigerator for four days or frozen in sterile containers for six months. Thaw milk in the refrigerator. It can be stewed, stored for 24 hours after thawing. Defrosting or heating in a microwave oven is not recommended because heat, high heat destroys some of the milk's antibodies and can burn the infant's oral mucosa. Do not refreeze thawed milk. Unused breast milk must be discarded. Limit alcohol and caffeine while breastfeeding. Begin manual expression of the breast or use an electric breast pump if the infant is unable to breastfeed due to prematurity or respiratory distress. Formula feeding can be used in place of breastfeeding as an occasional supplement to breastfeeding or when exclusively breastfed infants are weaned before 12 months of age. Commercial infant formulas provide an alternative to breast milk. They are modified from cow's milk to provide a comparable nutrients. However, breast milk is superior to any formula and even more crucial for a premature infant. If formula fed, an iron fortified formula is recommended for at least the first 12 months of life or until the infant consumes adequate solid food. Fluoride supplements can be required if an adequate level is not supplied by the water supply. Precisely follow the manufacturer's mis mixing directions. Bottles of mixed formula or open cans of liquid formula require refrigeration. Do not use if the formula has been left at room temperature for two hours or longer. Do not reuse partially emptied bottles of formula. Formula can be fed chilled, warmed, or at room temperature. Always give formula at approximately the same temperature. The infant should not drink more than 32 ounces of formula per 24-hour period unless directed by a provider. Bottle feeding. Hold the infant during feedings with the head slightly elevated to facilitate passage of formula or breast milk into the stomach. Tilt the bottle to maintain liquid in the nipple and prevent the swallowing of air. Do not prop the bottle or put an infant to bed with a bottle. This practice promotes tooth decay. Introducing solid food. Indicators for readiness include voluntary control of the head and trunk. Sit up alone or with minimal support. Opens mouth when food is offered. Opens mouth when food is offered. And brings items to their mouth. Solid food choices may be introduced in any order. Introduce one single ingredient new food from any food group every three to five days and monitor for allergy or intolerance, which can include fussiness, rash, upper respiratory distress, vomiting, diarrhea, or constipation. The infant can be ready for three meals per day with three snacks by eight months of age. Homemade baby food is an acceptable feeding option. Do not use canned or packaged foods that are high in sodium. Select fresh or frozen foods and do not add sugars or other seasonings. Open jars of infant food can be stored in the refrigerator for up to 24 hours. By nine months of age, the infant should be able to eat table foods that are cooked, chopped, and unseasoned. Do not feed the infant honey due to the risk of botulism. Appropriate finger foods include ripe bananas, toast strips, graham crackers, cheese cubes, noodles, and peeled chunks of apple, pears, or peaches. Avoid giving infants who is less than 12 months of age foods that are considered risk for choking hazard, grapes, nuts, and raw carrots. Nutrition-related problems, colic. Colic is characterized by persistent crying, lasting three hours or longer per day. The cause of colic is unknown, but unusually occurs in the late afternoon more than three days per week for more than three weeks. The crying is accompanied by a tense abdomen and legs drawn up to belly. If breastfeeding, eliminate cruciferous vegetables, which is cauliflower, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts, cow's milk, onion, and chocolate, and limit caffeine and nicotine. Burp the infant in an upright position. Lactose intolerance. Lactose intolerance is the inability to digest significant amount of that lactose, the predominant sugar of milk, and is due to inadequate lactase, the enzyme that digests lactose into glucose and galactose. Lactose intolerance has an increased prevalence in individuals of Asian, Native American, African, Latino, and Mediterranean descent. Findings include abdominal distension, flatches, and occasional diarrhea. Soy-based or casein hydrolysate formulas can be prescribed as alternative formulas for infants who are lactose intolerant. Failure to thrive. <clears throat> Failure to thrive is defined as inadequate gains in weight and height in comparison to established growth and development norms. Weight for length less than fifth percentile or weight for age below the third percentile. Assess for findings of congenital defects, central nervous, 
system disorders or partial intestinal obstruction. Monitor for swallowing or sucking problems. Identify feeding patterns, especially concerning preparation of formula. Observe for psychological problems, psychosocial problems, especially impaired caregiver and fit bonding, abuse and neglect. Provide support, supportive nutritional guidance. Usually a high calorie, high protein diet is indicated. Provide supportive parenting guidance. Diarrhea. Diarrhea is characterized by the passage of more than three loose, watery stools over a 24 hour period. Overfeeding and food intolerances are common causes of osmotic diarrhea. Infectious diarrhea in the infant is commonly caused by rotavirus. Mild diarrhea can require no specific interventions. Check with the provider for any diet modifications. Treatment for moderate diarrhea should begin at home with oral rehydration solutions. After each loose stool, an 8-ounce solution should be given. Scorch drinks are contraindicated. Educate parents about the findings of dehydration, listlessness, sunken eyes, sunken fontanelles, decreased tears, dry mucous membranes, and decreased urine output. Breastfed infants should continue nursing. Formula-fed infants usually do not require diluted formulas or special formulas. Contact the provider if findings of dehydration are present or if vomiting, bloody stools, high fever, change in mental status, or refusal to take liquids occurs. Constipation is the inability or difficulty to evacuate the bowels. Constipation is not a common problem for breastfed infants. Constipation can be caused by formula that is too concentrated. Stress the importance of accurate dilution of formula. Advise adherence to the recommended amount of formula intake for age. Nursing assessment data collection interventions. Nursing assessments should include an assignment, assessment of knowledge base of the client regarding nutritional guidelines for infants, normal infant growth patterns, breastfeeding, formula feeding, and the progression for introduction of solid foods. Additionally, nurses should provide education and references for the client regarding each of the assessments listed above. Childhood growth rate slows following infancy. MyPlate.gov is a food guidance system that offers an internet-based tool to provide clients with individualized recommendations for adequate nutrition. Children require the same food groups as adults, but in smaller serving sizes. Energy needs and appetite vary with the child's activity level and growth rate. Generally, nutrient needs increase with age. Attitudes towards food and general food habits are established by five years of age. Increasing the variety and texture of foods helps a child develop good eating habits. Foods like hot dogs, popcorn, peanuts, grapes, raw carrots, celery, peanut butter, tough meat, and candy can cause choking and aspirations. Inclusion in family mealtime is important for social development. Group eating becomes significant means of socialization for school age children. Toddlers 1 to 3 years old. Nutrition guidelines. Toddlers generally grow 2 to 3 inches in height and gain approximately 5 to 6 pounds a year. Limit 100% juice to 4 to 6 ounces a day. The 1 to 2 year old child requires whole cow's milk to provide adequate fat for the still growing brain. Food serving size is 1 tablespoon for each year of age. Exposure to a new food might be needed 15 to 20 times before the child develops an acceptance of it. If there is a negative family history for allergies, cow's milk, chocolate, citrus fruits, eggs, whites, seafood, and nut butters can be gradually introduced while monitoring the child for reactions. Excuse me. Toddlers prefer finger foods because of their increasing anatomy. They prefer plain foods to mixtures, but usually like macaroni and cheese, spaghetti, and pizza. Regular meal times and nutritious snacks best meet nutrition nutrient needs. Snacks or desserts that are high in sugar, fat, or sodium should be avoided. Children are at an increased risk for choking until four years of age. Avoid foods that are potential choking hazards. Always provide adult supervision during snack and meal times. During food preparation, cut small bite-sized pieces that are easy to swallow to prevent choking. Do not allow the child to engage in drinking or eating during play activities or while laying down. Iron deficiency anemia is the most common nutritional deficiency disorder in children. Lean red meats provide sources of readily absorbable iron. Consuming vitamin C, orange juice, and tomatoes with plant sources of iron, beans, raisins, peanut butter, whole grains, will maximize absorption. Milk should be limited to the recommended quantities, 24 ounces, because it is a poor source of iron and can displace the intake of iron-rich foods. Vitamin D. Vitamin D is essential for bone development. 
Recommended vitamin D intake is the same, 5 micrograms per day, from birth through age 50. Children require more vitamin D because their bones are growing. Milk, cow or soy, and fatty fish are good sources of vitamin D. Sunlight exposure leads to vitamin D synthesis. Children who spend large amounts of time inside, watching TV or playing video games are at an increased risk for vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D assists in the absorption of calcium into the bones. Preschoolers from three to six years old. Nutrition guidelines. Preschoolers generally grow two to three inches in height and gain approximately five to six pounds a year. Preschoolers need to consume 13 to 19 grams a day of complete protein. If the preschooler consumes foods from all five food groups and height and weight are within expected reference ranges, supplemental vitamins and minerals might not be needed. Preschoolers tend to dislike strong tasting vegetables like cabbage and onions, but like many raw vegetables that are eaten as finger foods. Food jags, ritualistic preference for one food, are common and usually short-lived. My plate guidelines are appropriate, requiring the lowest number of servings per food group. Food patterns and preferences are first learned from the family and peers begin influencing preferences and habits around five years of age. Nutritional concerns and risks. Concerns include overfeeding, intake of high calorie, high fat, high sodium snacks, soft drinks and juices, and inadequate intake of fruits and vegetables. Be alert to the appropriate serving size of food, one tablespoon per year of age. Avoid high fat and high sugar snacks. Encourage daily physical activities, can switch to skim or 1% low-fat milk after two years of age. Iron deficiency anemia, lead poisoning, is a risk for children younger than six years of age because they frequently place objects in their mouth that can, obtain, that can contain lead and have a higher rate of intestinal absorption. Feed children at frequent intervals because more lead is absorbed on an empty stomach. An adequate intake of calories, calcium, iron, zinc, and phosphorus can increase susceptibility. School-age children 6 to 12 years, nutritional guidelines. School-age children generally grow 2 to 3 inches in height and gain approximately 5 to 6 pounds a year. Following my plate recommendations, the diet should provide variety, balance, and moderation. Young athletes need to meet energy, protein, and fluid needs. Educate children to make healthy food selections. Children enjoy learning how to safely prepare nutritious snacks. Children need to learn to eat snacks only when hungry, not when bored or inactive. Nutritional concerns and risks. Not eating breakfast occurs in about 10% of children. Optimum performance in school is dependent on a nutritious breakfast. Children who regularly eat breakfast tend to have an age-appropriate BMI. Overweight and obesity affects about 41% of children. Greater psychosocial implications exist for children than, than adults. <clears throat> Overweight children tend to be obese adults. Prevention is essential. Encourage healthy eating habits, decrease fats and sugars, which is empty calorie foods, and increase the level of physical activity. A weight loss program directed by a provider is indicated for children who are overweight or obese if they have comorbidity. Otherwise, efforts are directed at maintaining weight so the BMI will normalize as height increases. Praise the child's abilities and skills. Never use food as a reward or punishment. Nursing assessment, data collection, and interventions. Nursing assessments should include the parent's knowledge base of the child's nutritional requirements and nutritional concerns with regard to age. Nurses should provide education for the parent and child about nutritional recommendations. Adolescents. The rate of growth during adolescence is second only to the rate in infancy. Nutritional needs for energy, protein, and growth spurt. The family, female adolescent growth spurt usually begins at 10 or 11 years of age, peaks at 12 years, and is completed by 17. Female energy requirements are less than that of males as they experience less growth of muscle and bone tissue and more fat de de deposition. The male adolescent growth spurt begins at 12 or 13 of age, peaks at 14, and is completed by 21. Eating habits of adolescents are often inadequate in meeting recommenda recommended nutritional intake goals. Nutritional considerations. Energy requirements average 2,000 calories a day for a 12 to 18 year old female and 2,200 to 2,800 calories a day for a 12 to 18 year old male. 
the USDA reports that the average U.S. adolescent consumes a diet de- deficient in folate, vitamin A, and E, iron, zinc, magnesium, calcium, and fiber. This trend is more pronounced in females than males. Diet of adolescents generally exceed recommendations for total fat, saturated fat, cholesterol, sodium, and sugar. Nutritional risks. Eating and snacking patterns promote essential nutrient deficiencies, calcium, vitamins, iron, and fiber, and overconsumption of sugars, fat, and sodium. Adolescents tend to skip meals, especially breakfast, and eat more meals away from home. Foods are often selected from vending machines, convenience stores, and fast food restaurants. These foods are typically high in fat, sugar, and sodium. Carbonated beverages can replace milk and fruit juices in the diet with resulting deficiencies in vitamin C, riboflavin, phosphorus, and calcium. Increased need for iron. Females 14 to 18 years of age require 15 milligrams a day of iron for support, expansion of blood volume, and blood loss during menstruation. Males 14 to 18 years of age require 11 milligrams a day of iron to support expansion of muscle mass and blood volume. Inadequate calcium intake can predispose the adolescent to osteoporosis later in life. During adolescence, 45% of bone mass is added. Normal blood calcium levels are maintained by drawing calcium from the bones if calcium intake is low. Adolescents require at least 1,300 milligrams a day of calcium, and which can be achieved by three to four servings from the dairy food group. Dieting. The stigma of obesity and social pressure to be thin can lead to unhealthy eating practices and poor body image, especially in females. Males are more susceptible to using supplements and high-protein drinks in order to build muscle mass and improve athletic performance. Some athletes restrict calories to maintain or achieve a lower weight. Eating disorders can follow self-imposed crash diets for weight loss. Eating disorders, anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, binge eating disorder, commonly begin during adolescence. These disorders are discussed further in the Mental Health Review Model, Chapter 19, Eating Disorders. Adolescent pregnancy, the physiologic demands of a growing fetus compromise the adolescent's needs for their own unfinished growth and development. Inconsistent eating and poor food choices place the adolescent at risk for anemia, pregnancy-induced hypertension, gestational diabetes, premature labor, miscarriage, and birth of a newborn of low birth weight. Nursing assessment data collection and interventions. Nursing assessments should include a determination of the following in the adolescent. Typical 24-hour food intake, weight patterns, current weight, and body mass index, BMI. Attitude about current weight, use of nutritional supplements, vitamins, and minerals, medical history, and use of prescription medications, use of over-the-counter medications, use of substances such as marijuana, alcohol, and tobacco, level of daily physical activity, assess for findings of an eating disorder. This can include an evaluation of the adolescent's laboratory results. Nursing assessments should include strategies that promote health for the adolescent. Educate the adolescent on using my plate to meet energy and nutrient needs with three regular meals and snacks. Stress the importance of meeting calcium needs by including low-fat milk, yogurt, and cheese in the diet. <clears throat> Educate the adolescent on how to select and prepare nutrient-dense snack foods, unbuttered, unsalted popcorn, pretzels, fresh fruit, string cheese, smoothies made with low-fat yogurt, skim milk, or reduced-calorie fruit juice, and raw vegetables with low-fat dips. Encourage participation in vigorously physical activity at least three times per week. Refer pregnant adolescents to the Women, Infant, and Children WIC Nutrition Subsidy Program. Provide individuals and group counseling for adolescents who have findings of eating disorders. Adulthood and older adulthood. The 2020-2025 guidelines provide four overarching guidelines to encourage healthy eating patterns for each stage of life. Follow a healthy dietary pattern at every stage of life. Customize and enjoy nutrient-dense foods and beverage choices to reflect personal preferences, cultural traditions, and budgetary considerations. The dietary guidelines provide a framework that is designed for customization for individual needs and preferences, as well as food ways of diverse cultures. Focus on meeting food group needs with nutrient-dense foods and beverages and stay within calorie limits. Core elements of a healthy dietary pattern include vegetables of all types, these are dark green, red, and orange, peas, 
beans, and lentils, starchy, and other vegetables. Fruits, especially whole fruits. Grains, at least half should be a whole grain. Dairy, fat-free or low-fat milk, yogurt, and cheese, or alternatives if needed. Protein foods, which is lean meats, poultry, and eggs. Seafood, beans, peas, and lentils. Nuts, seeds, and soy products. Oils, which is vegetable oils, and oils and foods such as seafood and nuts. Limit food and beverages higher and added sugar, saturated fat, and sodium, and limit alcohol beverage. Foods and beverages high in added sugar, saturated fat, or sodium, as well as alcoholic beverage, should be limited. Added sugars, less than 10% of calories per day starting at age 2, and avoid foods and beverages with added sugars for those younger than age 2. Saturated fat, choose monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats from fish, lean meats, nuts, and vegetable oils. Less than 10% of calories per day starting at age 2. Sodium. Consume less than 2,300 milligrams a day, about one teaspoon of salt, by limiting most cans and processed foods. Prepare foods without adding salt. Alcoholic beverages. Drinking less is better for health. If choosing to drink alcohol, drink in moderation by limiting and take two drinks or less a day for men and one drink or less in a day for women. A balanced diet for all adults consists of 45% to 65% carbohydrates and 20 to 20, 35% fat, with 10% or less from saturated fats. The recommended amount for protein is unchanged in adults and older adults. However, many nutrition exp- experts believe that protein requirements increase in older adults. Older adults need to reduce total caloric intake. This is due to the decrease in basal metabolic rate that occurs from the decrease in lean body mass that develops with aging. Reduced caloric intake predisposes the older adult for development of nutrient deficiencies. Older adults can have physical, mental, and social changes that affect their ability to purchase, prepare, and digest foods and nutrients. Dehydration is the most common fluid and electrolyte imbalance in older adults. Fluid needs increase with medication-induced fluid losses. Some diseases processes necessitate fluid restrictions. BMI should be between 18.5 and 24.9. There is an increased risk for both overweight and underweight older adult clients. Overweight adults are more prone to hypertension, diabetes mellitus, and stroke. Nutritional concerns. A 24-hour dietary intake is helpful in determining the need for dietary education. Older adults can have oral problems like ill-fitting dentures, difficulty chewing or swallowing, and a decrease in salivation or poor dental health. Older adults have decreased cellular function and reduced body reserves, leading to decreased absorption of multiple vitamins and minerals, as well as reductions in insulin production and sensitivity. Older adults have a decreased lean muscle mass. Exercise can help to counteract muscle mass loss. The loss of calcium can result in decreased bone density in older adults. Balanced diet and nutrient needs. My plate suggests the following daily food intake for adults and older adults who get less than 30 minutes of moderate physical activity most days. Grains, select whole grains. Vegetables, select orange and dark green leafy vegetables. Fruits, select fresh, dried, canned, or juices. Avoid fruits with added sugar. Make half your plate vegetables and fruits. Milk, yogurt, and cheese group. One cup of milk or plain yogurt is equivalent to one and a half ounce natural cheese or two ounce processed cheese. Protein food group includes meat, fish, poultry, dry beans, eggs, soy products, seeds, and nuts. One ounce equivalent equals to one ounce meat, fish, or poultry, baked, grilled, or broiled, a quarter cup cooked beans, one egg, one tablespoon peanut butter, or or a half ounce nuts or seeds. Use lean meats. Oils. Use vegetable oils except palm and coconut. One tablespoon of oil equals three teaspoons equivalent. One tablespoon equals two and a half teaspoons dietary intake, and one ounce nuts equals three teaspoons oil, except hazelnut, which equals four teaspoons. Discretionary calories. 132 to 362 discretionary calories are permitted per day. These add up quickly and can be one from one or more food group. Minerals. Calcium requirements increase for older adults as the efficiency of calcium calcium absorption decreases with age. Vitamins A, D, C, E, and B6 and B12 can be decreased in older adults. Supplemental vitamins are recommended. Regular exercise. All adults should exercise at a moderate or vigorous pace for at least 150 minutes per week. 
Adults who cannot do 150 minutes of moderate activity should be physically active as tolerated. Moderate activities include gardening, yard work, golf, dancing, walking, and walking briskly. The loss of lean muscle mass is part of normal aging and can be decreased with regular exercise. The loss of lean muscle can be associated with a decrease in total protein and insulin sensitivity. Regular exercise can improve bone density, relieve depression, and enhance cardiovascular and respiratory function. Potential effect of physical, mental, and social changes. Diseases and treatments can interfere with nutrient and food absorption and utilization. Aging adults are at an increased risk for developing osteoporosis, decreasing total bone mass and deterioration of bone tissue. Adequate calcium and vitamin D intake with regular weight-bearing exercise is important for maximizing bone density. Musculoskeletal concerns such as arthritis cause pain that can interfere with the purchase and preparation of foods. Dementia can make shopping, storing, and cooking food difficult. Medications can cause electrolyte losses. Loss of smell and vision interfere with the interest in eating food. Older adults can have difficulty chewing, in which case mincing or chopping food is helpful. They can have difficulty swallowing food and thickened liquids can decrease the risk for aspiration. Social isolation, loss of a partner, and mental deterioration can cause poor nutrition in an adult and older adult clients. Encourage socialization and refer to a senior center or program. A fixed income can make it difficult for older adults to purchase needed foods. Refer to food programs, senior centers, and food banks. Meals on Wheels programs are available for housebound older adults. Fluid intake. The long-held standard for consuming eight eight eight-ounce glasses of liquid per day has been tempered by evidence that dehydration is not imminent even when less than 64 ounces of fluid is consumed. Solid foods provide varying amounts of water, making it possible to get adequate fluid despite low beverage intake. For healthy adults, it is generally acceptable to allow normal drinking and eating habits to provide needed fluids. Encourage water and natural juices and discourage drinking only soda pop and other liquids that have caffeine. Nursing assessment data collection and interventions. Nursing assessments should include a dietary profile of the adult or older adult medical history, medication regime, mobility, and social practices, mental status, financial circumstances are important components of the assessment. Nurses should provide education about dietary practices for the adult and older adult, while additionally providing referrals to registered dietitians and community agencies when needed. A nurse is teaching a group of clients who are pregnant about iron-rich foods. Which of the following foods should the nurse include? The answer is beans, fish, and lean red meats. A nurse is educating the parents of a toddler about appropriate snack foods. Which of the following foods should the nurse include? A, B, and E. Graham crackers, apple slices, and cheese cubes. A nurse is assessing a six-month-old infant who has a lactose intolerance. Which of the following findings should the nurse expect? A, B, D. Abdominal distension, flatus, and occasional diarrhea. All these are select all that apply. A school nurse is teaching a group of adolescents about healthy snack food choices. Which of the following foods should the nurse include? Carrot sticks with low-fat dip, cheese and crackers, and unbuttered popcorn. A nurse at a community center is providing a nutrition counseling for a group of older adult clients. Which of the following information should the nurse include? The need for vitamins and minerals can increase. Up to 35% of daily calories should come from fat and at least 45% of daily calories should come from carbohydrates.